Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Napoleon Total back with some Shogun 2 for the Samurai Scramble for Far East. And as you can see right now, um, Northern Lions wants peace after we destroyed their deal. Obviously, I'm gonna reject because I'm about to declare war on them. So yes. Um. So yes, this is with this is episode 13, and yes, stuff like that. Uh, the Takayami wants peace after um they declare war. The the Sioux declare war. <laughs> Takayama wants peace. The Sioux declare war, and the Obama wants peace. Obviously, the Obama also puts their army back in their capital, and stuff goes around. Um, mounting up rest in all these provinces, but I'm not, I don't really care, although I do exempt them from taxes just to make them somewhat happy, and then, yeah. Uh, there are some provinces I, I put them exempted on taxes, but they're still not happy, but anyway. Um, we're gonna fight them on the, the, the Takayama army on the, on the field. Most of them is, most of their army is cavalry. And the good way to deal with cavalry once again is put stakes, but in this battle you can see you will see me not putting stakes, and I'm gonna use another tactic. Which I'll explain shortly. As of right now, you can see my artillery just moving up, and because this is horse artillery, I can run them, which means they will be extremely fast. However, in this scenario I am not running them because, well, they get they do get tired. I think I think. But yes, um they are being they are running around, so yes. Um, eventually I'm going to ha have them drop, which is right here. I'm going to have them unlumber their artillery and turn their artillery to face the enemy. And, uh, yes, behind my men are marines, uh, especially on the right flank. Um, we have Wutenberg infantry, colonial line infantry, and the entire left flank. Sorry, not colonial infantry, uh, Prussian line infantry, and the entire right flank is just colonial light infantry, line infantry. As you can see, you can see in the distance, uh, you can see movement in the distance, and boom, we just open fire because um, a cavalry is just coming straight at us. Um, literally, there's a swarm of cavalry just charging at us. And that was canister shot. That shot was fired at point blank, and we just decimated the general. Um, and however, that does not save this unit on the right from being charged. However, I do a tactic called uh, form square, and square is basically I've, I've, I obviously formed it slightly a little bit too late, but uh, square has been formed is better than not being formed. And basically, what square does is pick puts the unit in, in the square, and you might be thinking, oh, well, how's that supposed to work? Well, historically, it worked because um, uh, you basically have the first rank of men just uh, going. Um, kneeling on the ground, having their bayonets pointing up. The second rank uh, does the, uh, I think the, well, no, the second rank does um, shoots at the enemy when they come, and uh, the the flags and colors are in the center, which you can see in this game not not always th that does not always happen. And the reason why it works so well is because horses, like humans, are not willing to commit suicide. Okay, I I, I take that back. Um, horses, um, horses are not willing to die. Horses are not willing to commit suicide, um, and the reason is simply because no one is gonna charge. No horse is gonna charge into a bunch of essentially stakes pointing at you. And now you might be thinking, "Oh, right, but uh, didn't they just charge?" In? Yeah, it's a game, guys. Like, like, let's be honest, it's a game. Um, in real life, uh, a good example is that at the battle is at the Battle of the Pyramids, when Napoleon fought against the Egyptians. Um, when I say Egyptians, I mean like the Egyptian tribes, I guess. Um, they basically, he basically just formed square and just essentially the horse, the, the Mamluk cavalry, the, and the Egyptian cavalry, wouldn't dare charge into his men because they are all pointing horses and they, they just got gunned down as they r ran around the square. Uh, the exact same thing happened at the Battle of Waterloo, in which the, the exact same thing happened, except for it was French cavalry against the British cavalry. And uh, Napoleon also has a saying that do not have your cavalry uh, unsupported, and this is exactly what is hap This is exactly what is not happening here. The, this cavalry force that that the um, the enemy sent out, the Takayama force sent out, uh, was definitely unsupported. Now you might be thinking, all oh, right, um, they only they, they don't have a lot of um, infantry. That that's true, but and yeah, so that's their problem of having all cavalry armies. Um, as you can see here, I'm trying to move my artillery, for artillery forward, and yes, this is a six-pounder artillery, uh, uh, artillery, and this this is basically a very fast artillery that you can get around the battlefield really quickly. 
Um, I'm falling. I'm kind of falling into Napoleonic style of battle. Uh, sorry, the no Napoleon style of battle, which is basically like um, the fast for artillery at least. Um, fast artillery is better than slow heavy artillery. And well, although I can sometimes use heavy artillery, I rather prefer, uh, at least on a campaign, um, a uh, very uh, fast artillery. On uh, on a battlefield, I rather prefer, depending on the situation, I rather prefer heavy to light artillery. Um, some, sometimes a 6-pounder is more than enough, sometimes a 12-pounder is not even enough, so yeah. And once again, guys, 12-6-pounders um, are the weight of the shell and not the weight of the gun. If That that would be pretty funny if a cannon was 6 pounds. As you, as you can see, in this situation, we moved up, and then the, once again, we are just opening fire at the enemy in the distance. Uh, and you can see right here where we, got, we are opening fire. My Marines and Prussian Line Infantry are just opening up at a unit that you probably cannot see. So yes, um, the unit that is charging at us is actually a spear levy, so that is why, that is their only, essentially one of their only units. Um, the unit on the right, which is the Gutenberg Infantry, is not opening fire because line of sight is a problem, so yeah. Um, and finally, I have these two units, the Prussian Line Infantry and the uh, Marines, hold fire, and the reason why is because I do not want to get friendly fire on my artillery. Artillery. Um, for those that are interested in how to kill these guys, the artillery fast, you just all you have to do is sh shoot at the horses that are driving the artillery ba uh, bear artillery crew. And uh, the entire artillery piece will go, to, will die. Essentially, that is kind of funny, but it's 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 how it is. And obviously, like with all artillery at this close of a range, um, the shot I load is going to be canister. And this is going to be pretty funny because the enemy charging at us is basically um. Quite literally, going to get evaporated. So, um, that was pretty fast and pretty quick. Um, they're now they're now running away. And uh, that is for some reason going to propel more enemies to charge at us. Um, uh, their their other unit of spear levy and levy infantry is just going to come charging straight at us. And I thought that was it uh, because I thought in the beginning I destroyed all the enemy cavalry, so this should be an easy battle. Um, I seriously underestimated my enemy because, as you can see in the background, more cavalry is just appearing out of the blue, and uh, literally they're just going to be charging on my right flank. Um, but in the center, the enemy cavalry, uh, the enemy army is getting uh, defeated. Uh, we are just moving canister, and the enemy cavalry does the smart thing and decides to avoid my cannons, but they decide to charge into my infantry, which is a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is that you won't be facing with free, uh, shotgun cannons. The bad thing is that you'll get shot to pieces, and uh, my guys will reach the form squared. Um, this unit doesn't really get the form square because stuff like that. This unit on the right, uh, I learned from my lesson, and we're already forming square the second the enemy comes. Um, this unit on the right is also, also forming square, as you can see, the first rank uh, is um, kneeling, and the second with point, bayonets pointing up, and uh, yeah, the exact same thing is happening. Uh, forming square in this game, at least they, the horses don't don't just like um, destroy your entire enemy unit, which is very good. On the right flank, I'm just on the extreme right flank. To be, to, I m might I add, uh, my my men are just turning away so they can just blast the horses uh, to death. And once again, the ca problem with cavalry is that all you have to do is shoot the horses or the rider, which makes uh, infantry men a big uh, horses cavalry a big target. So yes, all along the line, the enemy army is de being defeated. As you can see um, right here, the enemy army is essentially being defeated, and we've we have taken the field. We've lost 334 while the enemy lost, um, yeah, tw essentially twice our number, but yes, um, the enemy lo general levels up, I do not know how the heck you level up from when, when you get defeated, but yeah, I guess that happens. We're gonna auto-resolve this because it is quite simple and we're not gonna take too many ca casualties. As a matter of fact, yeah, this is a little bit, uh, uninteresting. We take a, a f well, at least 100 casualties. 183, but we killed the entire enemy force, so twice our size, so that's wonderful. 
The Takayama, are the Takayama my bad, are left without an army, which is 100% great, and I have Grunt Gunter coming in from the uh, north to finish off the Takayama. I decided to continue the siege because why not? Um, why not wait for two armies to converge on a single pro a single province and then just wipe the Takayama out? Uh, anything else to care about? No. Um, a lot of stuff has been already dealt with. Um, the Obama, I'm gonna siege uh, their capital, which is Wakasa, I think. And we're just gonna... They, the Obama, for some reason, has a lot of generals, like six generals, a lot of cavalry, and a lot of infantry. I'm just gonna put my army there and just um, continue the siege, because I'm not gonna fight that. Um, I'm gonna give the enemy a chance to uh, attack me on the battlefield, and in which I'll just destroy them with squares and stuff like that. As you can see, this massive army, well, this not this elite army, to, might I add, is being prepared to face the Northern Alliance. Um, in the south, I do have another army that I'm gonna be putting them on ships, and this army, uh, as the name suggests, is mostly armed with Marines. I never, I, I don't, I'm not using Marines that often in my campaign, and the reason is, um, they're. they're their unit of 160 and my most of my colonial units are 160 so yes yeah, stuff like that um but i should be using marines a little bit more often because marines are not that bad um they have more stats but the only downside is that they have they don't have that many men and in hatachi i'm going to order my guys to just build another um order recruit a, a few more cavalrymen because cavalry is what is needed to run down the enemy and so yes that's going to happen Elsewhere, my empire has gotten so large that uh, I have to check left, check right for every turn. Um, I think the problem gets worse as the empire gets bigger, which is obviously the reason, one of the reasons why empires, big empires at least, fail. The other reason is due to sheer, sheer inept, inept, because because the rulers are uh, either crazy or dumb or straight outright terrible. And speaking of which, um, the one of the terrible rulers of Obama decided to literally come out and attack me. Um, the Obama clan is pretty much screwed, and literally they decided to attack me instead of waiting in the castle, um, which they sh which has downsides and upsides, um, downsides and upsides. What what the hell? What the heck am I saying? But um, on the battlefield, I literally have the biggest advantage I could ever think of, and that is this massive hill. Uh, this massive hill uh, is literally give, gonna give me the advantage. So literally, what happens is that my men will not be worrying about friendly fire because literally the first rank is my colonial line infantry. The second rank are my elite infantry. And literally, what is gonna happen is the enemy is gonna charge, and we're just gonna gun them down. And when they come in range of the second uh, line, which is on top of the hill, they're just gonna get gunned down even faster. So yes, and to make it worse for the enemy. I'm gonna do a tactic called, which you guys have seen, and it's literally called Plant Stakes. And I think you can see uh, very soon that I'm starting, uh, I'm going to plant stakes. But the enemy, at this point, enemy mortars are just gonna be shelling us. As you can see, I finally clicked the order to plant stakes, and yep, you can see my guys preparing to just plant stakes. Um, I do not know for what instance, why the heck do, uh, um, why do heck. Why the heck do uh, infantrymen get to plant stakes? Because I always, because uh, historically, all most of the stakes were origi originally planned by engineers because they, these engineers will prepare the stakes and then give it to the infantry, and they will the infantry will uh, do as they see fit. Um, obviously, the the definition of do as they see fit is kind of um, not self-explanatory. So yeah, you have to kind of order them to do stuff like whatnot. Um, yes, so, our stakes are being planted, um, stakes I find are not very useful in tree lines, although you can plant them, the most of the stakes will not be planted in the trees, so yes. Um, and once again, I'm planting stakes and using all this, this tactic because the enemy army is mostly made out of cavalry. And speaking of the enemy army, we are at the shrine in which the enemy is marching past. Um, very beautiful shrine. I think they modded that in too. Um, so good job, every, uh, modding team. The enemy cavalry is made up of literally cavalry, like mostly katana cavalry and stuff like that. For some reason, the armor on this um, Obama kat uh, katana cavalry looks very um, interesting. Um, especially when it's rain, like, uh, I don't know for what reason, but like, during the rain, uh, armors, 
the armor and then the whatnot, um, the armor, the uniform, it just like wonderful. Especially armor, that I, I come to find. Especially Japanese armor and European armor, they, they look very interesting. As, but however, looking interesting does not mean that you'll be safe from bullets and literally the exact is just gonna happen. They're, these guys are just gonna get gunned down. On the, my extreme right flank, sorry, my left flank, uh, my guys are just farming in the square and then we're just blasting the cavalry that charges at us, which uh, most of them get, bla get blasted before they even come into range. To make it worse, my on the second tier, I have my lifeguards just opening fire, so that's interesting. Um, you're gonna charge the back of my square, but because we are in the square, it doesn't really matter. So yes, and once again, um, I, I find it very interesting that the colors and standards of a regiment are not are on the side instead of the middle. Now they're in the middle, so that's that's wonderful. But as you can see, the enemy general decides to charge in. Oh, okay. One of the enemy generals decide to charge in, and he gets absolutely wrecked. Not because he charged and my men opened fire, it's because he charged into the stakes. And because the general unit is so small, it doesn't really matter. As you can see, the enemy is returning fire from uh, from uh, from my view, but once again, these guys are using matchlocks from 300 years ago. And as a matter of fact, you, you can see right now what guns they have. Um, these are uh, Portuguese trained samurai. And off the bat, they're just they're just getting blown away by my guys. Uh, my guys are European trained, and they have better guns. 300 years of difference makes a lot. And yeah, they're just gonna get gunned down. <laughs> Once again, oh, I find the armor looks very uh, interesting on these guys. Like, for some reason, like, um, wet and then also looks pretty good. Yeah, stuff like that. My men are still in square because the enemy cavalry is still a threat running around. Although most of them are ch charging, unfortunately, into stakes. Oh, fortunately for me. But that's what I'm saying. Um, the enemy uh, Yari infantry is still look looking pretty dang neat, but not as neat as the samurai um, mounted with te um, Tepu Samurai. So Tepu Samurai is basically Portuguese trained samurai. And these guys have routed before the sec uh, before they've even engaged in combat, which is, uh, yeah, interesting. Really interesting. The samurai now are running away, decide to not run away because behind them we have le uh, we, uh, the, the Obama have levy infantry and uh, they're just gonna return fire on my guys. But once again, my guys are just gonna devastate these guys. Um, and not to mention these guys because they're using guns from 300 years, 300 years ago. It's gonna be quite hard for them to reload after they shoot. My guys have a way easier time, and yes. So yes, we route them too, and at this point, the, the, the it's pretty clear that who is going to win the battle, I have uh, hundreds of more left. As you can see, on the right flank, there are still some guys holding out, uh, as with this unit, but they decide to, yep, um, let's get the heck out of there, and they decide to run away. Uh, honestly, that's a nice choice. If I were them, I'll just run away, but then it also sells them to their fate of being destroyed. It was a, a decisive victory. The enemy lost more than half of their force, and we just lost a mere three, uh, three to four hundred. It's uh, really a joke. We're gonna auto resolve the battle of Wakasama, um, and uh, yeah, because the enemy only has eighty-one, we're just gonna auto resolve, and we take literally no casualties. I think. Yes, we take no casualties. Uh, we're gonna peacefully occupy, and off the bat, you can see there's a British army on the right on our border. They were probably they were they were at, the British were at war with the Obama, and now they're not at war because we we just destroyed them. Um, I'm gonna scout in Tango and to see what British armies they have, and hold did I find a lot. Um, this British army is completely massive. This um yeah impressive and really impressive. Mostly with Gurkha riflemen, <laughs> Jesus, uh, Sepoy infantry and uh, gren uh, grenadiers uh, hi and Highland foot. Um, so that's pretty interesting. So yes, uh, Cadet School and Police Station is being built in Omi and uh, Kakuza, and now we're just gonna defeat the Sword of Takayama. And we're gonna assault the siege, uh, assault the city. As you can see, I have two armies on the field. One is coming from the north, and one is coming from the south. This is the southern. Uh, uh, this is the southern army, as led by um, Rolf, I think. Yeah, this is led by Rolf, 
And as you can see, I gave him, I, uh, for this army, I gave him mostly marines, a lot of colonial line infantry, impression line infantry, uh, good stuff. Uh, well, obviously they're not as elite as the, the army net, um, is being led by Gunter. Um, so yes, all of them are imperial kin, so, well, um, yeah, stuff. Um, as you can see, uh, this is only half of my, um, a uh, half of a Gunter's army, and Gunter's army is just basically mortars and then uh, infantry, um, and infantry. So, yes, um, a lot of colonial light infantry off the bat because they are easy to, uh, maintain and, and then they're, uh, they're very fast to produce. But, um, the enemy fortress, uh, you guys seen it, is, it's literally, um, the fortress that we've been fighting against, um, is not that common, but, hey, it's pretty common. Uh, I've done it. We we fought two battles on the exact same fortress, and uh, yes, an outer an in, uh, in, uh, the inner walls, which there are two, the late the first and second layers of the inner wall, are pretty dang uh, dang great. Uh, the outer wall is just fence, and that's it. Um, can you consider this a fortress? I can I can consider it a fortress, but not as big as other fortresses that we've taken over. So yes. Especially the ones that the Americans made, which I have to give it to them. They know how to make some good fortresses. Um, not even a joke. And off the bat, my art uh, my mortars are just pounding the towers, and then yeah. Um, the other half of Gunter's, Gunter's army is literally this, and these guys are literally lifeguards. I, I do I need to tell you that much? Yeah, I think you guys pretty much know what lifeguards look like by now for those that are been watching. And lifeguards off the bat, uh, I have a lot of units of these, at least six. And I'm just gonna send these guys to literally just shoot at the the enemy who, is, who are on the walls. And yep, these guys are moving forward a, as quick as possible. Um, if you if you guys watch um, Lori and Generals, Gods and sorry, Gods and Generals, uh, there's a scene from the Battle of Fredericksburg in which um, when crossing a river, the the a uh, uh, Union. Uh, you, a Union commander uh, said, "The hardest thing for any army is to get into position after crossing a river, and that is pretty much pretty uh, close to this situation." Um, certain people I have real respect for. Um, one of them was the Duke of Wellington at the Battle of Agile against uh, during the Second Moroccan War against the uh, various against the Marathas. I, I guess you can call them that. And in which he just crossed the river and was literally being shot by cannonballs, but his men surprisingly held on. In a similar sense, we are being shot by cannonballs, but because our men are lifeguards, they will not break. <laughs> um, once again, lifeguards are the bravest, the best, and stuff like that. I really realized that in this episode, either uh, in this series, I haven't really talked about grenadiers. And besides the fact that they don't throw grenades, so for those that are interesting, uh, interested, grenadiers are these guys with mass, massive bearskin hats or caps. Uh, they are re really ominous, um, unless you're from the, uh, unless you're certain units in the French army, they're not really uh, that ominous. Uh, um, almost every unit has um, grenadiers. Obviously, um, life, uh, light, sorry, light infantry don't have them as much as we know. Although there are elite companies within life, uh, light regiments. For example, there is lifeguard Jaegers, but although that's more like lifeguards to the Jaegers to the lifeguards, if that makes sense. But grenadiers are these guys that uh, are are the tallest, the best men from their company. Um, the Austrians will actually do a step called um. You have to serve various um, campaigns. Uh, at least this was during the Napoleonic Wars. Um, you have to at least serve three campaigns, which is kind of funny when you realize um, uh, the campaigns that the Austrian army has been on. All of them were mostly defeated. Um, <laughs> so that's interesting. Um, um, also, um, the Grenadiers do get a pay raise. They also like. Um, they are the best fighters in terms of melee, and um, they are the ones that are usually first to storm the building. And yes, um, you can see the pure devastation that we are unleashing on this poor unit. Um, 
this unit um, is just getting shot apart. Obviously, they're not taking as that that much damage because they're literally kneeling. So, well, some of them are, and the others um, who had their he heads up are mostly dead. So that's interesting. I don't know if these walls, if you shoot through these walls, uh, there are sometimes, as you can see, there are little gaps through the walls and you can shoot through the walls. So that makes this, our, my situation better. Um, um, what is going to make my situation also very good um, is, is the fact that I decided to move my grenadiers on this hill. And although I'm not going to camp this hill because if I camp, I'm going to not be assaulting the, assaulting the castle, but I'm going to move my uh, artillery up. And for those that know Gunter's army, Gunter's army has two artillery pieces. One is the captured American piece, and the one is the piece that we started the campaign off with, which is this piece that you're seeing right here. Um, and now you might, you guys might be wondering, wait, where's the second piece then? Well, um, the second piece has been stuck in the woods, like literally stuck in the woods. So we're gonna have a problem while doing that. Um, yes. Um, as you can see, um, how to unlimber artillery piece. As you can see, in this current situation, I will not limber the art unlimber the artillery because that that's just gonna make the artillery piece stuck, and we're not gonna be firing. Uh, very buggy these artillery pieces that I find. Um, not so much in regular Fall of the Samurai. So yes. Um, hey guys, um, you should be very happy because uh, in previous versions of this mod, um, you couldn't even use a naval um. Naval bombardment because that would suck. Obviously, I don't have enough ships to do naval bomb bombardment. I only done it once against the Americans, but yeah, that's it. As you can see, um, our guys are gonna prepare to fire, and we are gonna prepare to fire as soon as this um my men are loaded. And instead of using using standard shot, we're gonna use canister, and we're I'm gonna tell you the reason why. Now, canister for some reason does fire damage, and you heard me correct, as you can see, canister on these uh, wooden walls, I guess, does a lot of uh, fire damage. And for reasons I do not know, I literally do not know why. Um, it's it's not a bug because you, you do the exact same thing with explosive shot and uh, fall, regular fall of the samurai, and they do the exact same thing. So I don't know why, but uh, they do fire damage, and once the fire reaches a hundred percent, it it just gets destroyed as you can see eventually those guys flying over there um on my uh, with Gunter's army uh you see me deploy my cavalry against this unit that sallied out it's not a lot big unit but hey killing a unit where it counts matters oh uh, we're just gonna come in and kill them and um this is one of the ways that you will use hazards or like cavalry um exposed enemy units are very acceptable to cavalry and you can see my men cheering but eventually we're just gonna move them back behind enemy lines because uh, all the enemy need really needs to do in this situation is move another unit up and then start firing at my cavalry and my cavalry will be destroyed. Not that they will. Although there is a... I, I, when I use cavalry I use it very wisely. Um, on my... the rest of Gunter's, Gunter's army is just gonna be moving up and we're actually gonna scale the walls. So yes, um, we're scaling. Um, I'm sorry guys, this video is going to be a slightly longer, um, so um, grab a snack. On the left on the left of Gun Gunter's attack, we're going to call this section Gunter's attack, um, we're just destroying essentially the wall again. Um, and we're just climbing the walls, and we're destroying the gates. So now, um, the enemy has some defense, but that defense is not even facing us, facing us at this point. So we're just gonna walk straight in. And we're just gonna form a line and wait for the enemy to attack us because at this point I really need to just get as many as of my men ready to come here. And still the enemy is point point facing the wrong direction and now they finally decide to move and face my direction, hopefully. Uh, my men are just getting into formation and they're just uh, waiting for more of their comrades to come. 
Um, so that's interesting. Good stuff. Um, well, on the other side of um, Rolf's attack is basically just going as as expected. I canister shot the uh, um, the gate and the gate just burned. Now I'm sending in my lifeguards and obviously um, the first thing that you can tell is that there's someone shooting at these lifeguards and yes, there it's on the tower on the on the far right of the screen. Um, uh, top right of the screen to be exact. Well, now, now you don't see it. Uh, but um, there was a unit of levy infantry just shooting at my guys. Um, their shots are mostly missing but they do get some kills because my men are so clumped up. Um, I ordered a, a charge straight into these um, spear levy and a town levy to be exact and because my guys are doing so are the best units in the army they're gonna do extremely well against this poor levy unit which once again um, I call these guys uh, dudes who've been given spears at the last moment to defend their castle and they're not gonna stand a chance against my guys so watch the uh, watch the battle On the uh, future side, we are just bombarding mortars, uh, using mortars to blow these guys open. Also, we moved really close to open fire at these guys and uh, our opponents, the militia unit that was right there, decided to, yep, you know what, we're not doing it anymore. So they're just going to run out the building. Uh, they're eventually going to get charged by my guys, but my guys are just waiting here because, as you can see, um, on the on the top rank, there's a unit of levy infantry just pointing at us. We eventually destroyed the spear levy, so we're just gonna form up and get prepared to fire open fire at the enemy um, uh, unit nets uh, firing currently firing at us, as you can see by the muzzle flashes. I find it I find it is especially hard to line these guys up to open fire, um, like with all regular shogun too. It's pretty hard um, to have them open fire. They, you have to give get them in line, and then they have to wait for all their units to be with them, and then they start to move up, and they this, and then they start to shoot, which is a real big pain, especially when someone's firing at you. Thankfully for my situation, um, the enemy is uh, not really firing at me that badly. The enemy is firing at me um, with muskets 300 years ago. If this was an European army, this these all these guys will be wrecked. But now we find the side return fire. And the results are kind of devastating. Oh, when I mean kind of, I mean very devastating for these guys. Um, now you don't see any shots because I'm still repositioning my guys. Um, but as you can see, within the first two volleys, all these guys have been killed. And now we're just going to fire, keep firing volleys at, the, at, at um, this unit. Uh, it does not look pretty, I'm just going to warn you. And because our, the guys that are shooting are lifeguards, uh, this poor unit is just going to get wrecked. Um... It's not a fun time to be the defenders. I like how uh, I like how surprisingly that all these um, levy infantry have katanas in their belts, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, I'm gonna move my artillery into the castle, and we're just gonna open fire. Um, uh, canister shot at the gate and you 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 guys could obviously see the problem and I saw the problem when I was uh, fighting this battle that my men were literally in front of the cannons so I decided to move them the heck out of there thankfully my fires my cannons fire a little bit up or else that would have been a uh, disaster me killing a lot of my own troops and uh, yeah that's that um, we're gonna reload and we're gonna open fire and stuff like that For some reason, um, I find canister shot on these buildings, not not on the wooden fence, are pretty um, ineffective to make to start fires. Although they do start fires very shortly. Uh, as you can see, the enemy unit sallies out another levy unit, and that's just gonna weaken their defense. Um, it's not like I have a million units just standing out here preparing to gun them down. Definitely not. Uh, 
Oh wait, what is that? Oh, it's lifeguards. Oh no, they're just gonna get shot to pieces as they as they run away. Um, so yes. I'm pretty surprised actually how how little damage that my guys are doing, especially at this range. Like, um, it is point blank range and these guys are still running away like nothing's really happening. Well, at least half their unit ran away successfully. Finally, my guys are just gonna enter the the fortress and essentially after that it's just killing the mortar crews which haven't routed yet and that's it so um, this was essentially the battle of Obama am I right yes this is the siege of Obama that is being held by the Obama clan so yes we've taken it with minimal losses 219 killed and for the entire garrison of Obama and uh, Obama once again is in Hida province that is why you see Hida right there and yes um, off the bat, um, I'm gonna see what uh, Obama, uh, the Hida province has, and it's pretty not uh, surprising. So I decided to, you know what? Um, since the Sioux declared war, I mean, I'm gonna rush my uh, my army led by um, Rolf to um, Miho, Mino, my bad, and we're just gonna go quickly. Um, yes, I have a lot of spies that are running around, and because we have no major enemy at this point. Um, we're just gonna run them around to scout. Unless there is a major enemy, then we have a big problem. But as of right now, nothing big is going going on, so everything is going fine. Uh, my fleet off off the bat is not doing um that much, um, because once again we have no major naval players. The British surprisingly do not have a massive fleet. That is very surprising because the British Empire is known to have this massive fleet. Um, historically, the British um, are very uh, keen on their fleet. I decided to cancel military access with the Northern Alliance, and that, after 10 turns, grants me the right to declare war on them and go to war with them. As of right now, I'm just uh, slowly preparing my army at Nikita with uh, Christian, who is leading the army. Um, I have also another army that is moving to Fukushima by... not rail, but by ship. Um, it is... Um, Ralph, Ralph, and he's my son, my legitimate son. So we're just gonna move him to um, Fukushima, and that's gonna be it. I'm gonna transfer some units to um, um, him, my uh, my uh, my son, uh, from Nagita, and we're just gonna keep recruiting lifeguards because lifeguards are way too insane. Um, and since we're our economy is taking a little bit hit because we are producing so much troops, but I figured out that it was going to be worth it. And so, yes, um, that is pretty much the end of this episode, so have a great day, and I'll see you next one. Bye. Now, before you leave, I would like to thank you very much for watching this video. I would be honored if you could like and subscribe to the channel. Remember, more videos are coming out, so it is a good idea to click on that notification button. Anyways, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.